Yeah, he's a really loud yeah. chewer. Anyway, let's let's start. <clears throat> All right, Morgan, take All it right. away. All right, let's do it. Take number ten. I don't even know. Now yeah. my voice is fucked. We already right. started. <laughs> Three, two, <clears throat> one. <clears throat> Welcome to episode one of the Coffee Club, a new exciting podcast with some runner boys. Uh, this is officially episode one for us. Last week, we tried to film an episode, and that's episode zero. That's a hidden secret episode. You guys will never get to see that one. Never. It was absolutely terrible. You don't want to see it. But we're back to try again. This is episode one. Uh, just to get us going, little introductions. Uh, myself, I'm Morgan McDonald. Um, do you guys want to like share a fun fact about each other? Has anyone got a fun fact about me? Ooh. I've got a fun fact that is about Morgan McDonald. Um, so <clears throat> Morgan McDonald is technically a chicken. <laughs> chicken boy Morgs. Um, chicken boy Morgs. I think the one thing that you guys would probably know that if you're watching this and knowing his YouTube is that he's actually more of a cat than a chicken. So I'm a big fact, cat guy. He's a big cat guy. Yeah. Um, he yeah. doesn't actually... Pre- Persuade that he's persona. You guys yeah, haven't seen that side of me yet. But, but we'll, we'll get to that side in a sec. But that yeah. Morgan is pretty much a cat. So living with him is a cat. Yeah. And so then that's, a fun fact about that's me done. Next to me, we have. My name's Ollie Hall. And fun fact, guys. Anybody got a fun <laughs> fact about me? I don't know if there, <laughs> there are many that aren't kind of in the public. Fun fact, which is very good public knowledge at this point, is that Ollie drinks an amazing amount of Mountain Dew. Or just any soft drinks in general. I'm a big yeah, soda guy. Cream, yeah. I think cream soda. Is, cream soda is, yeah, my new, my new, uh, my new poison. He has, a, he has a Dr. Pepper sit on the table over there, which he's just hiding. I um, just sculpted that, actually. Now I'm on my coffee, so caffeine's yeah. through the roof now. So I'm going to be off my head yeah. with and this podcast. And then uh, <laughs> our other member, who unfortunately isn't in person with us today, is... What's up? George, George, George. Beamish. Say your thing. I'm flag stuff. Okay, fun fact about well, Jordy, he has to... Well, I know. I, I, thought, I, know. I thought he was going to say what he said last time, which was chowder. Oh. oh, yeah, chowder. Say chowder. You mean on episode minus one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, Jordy's from New Zealand, so he sometimes speaks in Maori, and we have no idea what he's saying. As two Australians, we don't know that no. um, language that well. No uh, Fun fact about George, he has to shower every night before bed. It's a routine. What? He's Wait. always showering before bed. Actually, I have, I'm have. i like kind of like that as well. Yeah, he, no, but like, it's like clockwork. Anytime yeah. I'm with George, he has to shower before bed just to make sure he feels good when he jumps in to snuggle. I so, like that. Um, I like all that right, a lot. well, Morgan. Um, yeah. yeah, all right, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is like, we're really still figuring this out. Last episode, episode zero, we spent probably the first like 20 minutes going through all the rules for the podcast and explaining our ideas behind it, which are very unfinished ideas I should I should put in there. Uh, so maybe we can just like very quickly go through some of the rules that we laid down. Um, I don't think it was, I don't know if it was rule one, but like kind of the point is like to drink coffee. Uh, I already finished my coffee because we've been trying to film this for about half an hour right now and we're only finally getting... Uh, getting going. So my coffee is gone. Uh, I don't think George has a coffee. I, I don't. But I had coffee Violation. in like a couple of hours ago and it was delicious. Yeah, he's, he's, cl- he's close to I strike two already. Yeah. He's already close to strike two. This is the first episode. Getting real close. And George is already... Is uh, like two strikes. Don't yeah, get, pushing don't the label. Strikes, you don't, We're you calling don't this the Coffee Club podcast. Yeah. He's got a bloody coffee in his hand. Oli, yeah. you would like that place actually. I probably would. I probably would. Wait, where'd you go? It's called Lux. Lux. We actually almost went in Phoenix when we were down there training. There's one in Phoenix. Oh, with one yeah. flags there. We'll have to check it out. Of course it is. But uh, yeah, so kind of like the idea behind this podcast was the – we would – oh, I, I feel like kind of joined the team when we were in Eugene for the Olympic trials. And none of us were competing, obviously, in the Olympic trials because it's two Aussies in New Zealand. And then we also had Carlos, who is, represents Mexico. And we had our chiropractor, Jason, there amazing guy and we would like really enjoy just like going out for coffees and it would be called coffee club and you just go to like a nice cafe there in eugene and just sit down and chat and have a bunch of coffees and uh so that's kind of like what we're trying to reconnect to here i guess is just like those fun conversations and just uh try invite 
a few more people in through sharing them on the internet. So I don't know if that was a rule, but that's kind of like the very, that's like the birth of the idea behind the coffee. I think that's the, that's the origin story. That's our origin story. Just to I, get I, feel, I feel like it's a good one too. Like that is yeah. legit how that happened. Yeah. hundred percent true facts from Morgan. True facts from Morgan. <laughs> Spitting think, straight facts. I think our idea as well, uh, once we start to get the logistics better is that we do this live. <laughs> So then we'd have people who join into the coffee club, have their coffee any time of day, really. And you can kind of sit with us and have a conversation. Um, yeah. And yeah. What we're doing. So, yeah, I think I think rule one was actually this is either rule one. Or same rule place, two. same time. I think exactly. that's rule same one. Place, same rule. Exactly. So then it's like a part of your weekly routine for, say, on like a Saturday at. 11 a.m. Yeah, we all sit down and have coffee. And then you guys and can send us, send us topics, send us messages, um, and yeah. you can kind of engage with us, and we can have a conversation. I think it'd be nice, you know. Yeah. Every morning is. I think we found a lot of joy in Eugene um, doing that, and just sitting down and enjoying each other's company. So we thought we'd bring that to much more of a wider audience. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's. We had six rules, but that's pretty much all you need to know. I would At like point, as yeah. a quick summary i think it's going to be pretty informal we're going to like well obviously a bunch of pro runners so we're going to talk about what's going on in our lives in the pro running world a lot and but it's going to be really informal so hopefully it's kind of a different dynamic or a different perspective compared to what you might listen to on other running type podcasts like primarily we want it to just be entertaining and just relax i mean i think we'll probably hopefully share some nuggets of wisdom here and there but hopefully Above all else, it's just entertaining, just us having a little chat. So, yeah, I think that's our goal, at least. But, yeah. I forgot so, rule two. I don't know any of the other rules, but... I don't remember any of them. How about we just we just get rolling into the topics then? I think that's a fantastic idea. And the first topic which we wanted to talk about, and as I'm about to talk about this, I already kind of feel awkward talking about other pro runners but that's kind of like what we wanted to talk about because that is what we would talk about among ourselves. But uh, this week, past week, I think Sinclair Johnson, I think it was only two days ago, she just announced that she was leaving Bauman. And I think she's maybe like the third or fourth female to leave that group. Fifth? I think or so. Maybe some are, some are unofficial. So we, we can only talk about official ones. Yeah, the unofficial ones we can't really comment True. on. True. Yeah. The interesting thing, I think there was a... I presume only one is unofficial now. Oh, okay. Yeah. But most people I, know. Most people, yeah. And the one thing I sort of thought interesting was I saw uh, on social media that she was fourth at the 2019 US trials. Yeah. She was 12th at these Olympic trials. She spent a year with Bauman. I think she joined them in 20, or well, two years, about 2019. I think 2020 she joined. Yeah. And she's now leaving and going to Pete's group, which is which hasn't been named yet. Um, they haven't had official naming. I think that's yeah. coming out probably the, the next few months. But um, as I think a lot of people that follow the running world is is kind of been – a pretty hard uh, year for Bauman, particularly the women's team. Yeah, it's been interesting. <laughs> it's uh, been interesting to say the least. Interesting is a good word for it. Uh, <laughs> as, as runners, obviously, you know, you when you uh, are impacted by something like that in the sport, everyone has kind of their own opinions and, and their own kind of insight to it. So um, it's crazy to see kind of how that something like that happens and then you just see the deterioration of people just kind of... Well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of narratives going on yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Literally, right now it's literally just waiting to see who else is going to announce that they're leaving. <laughs> Once a week, it's like, oh, yo, who, who's yeah, leaving? This I mean, it's like it's like it's like Big Brother or The Bachelorette. It's like one, someone, yeah, one someone's getting murdered off every. And like, I just it's wanna... like a reality show. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's, like a reality. it's Love Island. Someone's getting kicked off Love Island. Someone's getting kicked off every <laughs> Once week. Once a week, yeah. Jerry's got the yeah. rose. I wanna I wanna <laughs> say before we get too into it is that like we all like I grew up a big fan of Bauman kind of like that's like a group that I like I visited them. Um, oh. and there's so, there's so much stuff going on with it because I mean, obviously we have to mention like the Shelby stuff. I mean, all of us have our own opinions on that, which maybe we'll get into based on like the evidence and our feelings on that. And I think it's easy to like, look at that and be like, oh, maybe that's the reason the group is leaving. Maybe there's a lot more stuff that, I mean, people are leaving the group and maybe there's a lot more to that than we know, but there is also just like the realities of pro running where, uh, it was an Olympic year. A lot of people's contracts are up, uh, like after an Olympic year, or so at the end of this year, or some people were up like at the end of last year when the Olympics were meant to be. That Bauman is a big group, so 
only a certain percent are really going to be succeeding and then the rest are kind of going to get left behind and they're not going to be super content so they're going to look for different sit setups and you know there's just like so much stuff going on but it is still very interesting to look at a group which I, like in 2016 i think they were looked at as like 2016 i think was when they were they had so many people make the olympics and they, they were they were definitely one of the best teams in the world and i think that's the one thing yeah. that drives you out of college i think geordie I know Jordy can talk about it because he was considering Bauman when he was going to get professional, so was Morgan. Um, and they're a team that obviously people inspire to be a part of because they get results. And uh, it's funny to see this year they're not getting as – like they still got really good results. I mean, they had – Yeah, I mean, Grant and, and well, Woody. Yeah, Mo. so like they have still have results, but I think maybe people got upset about their personal results. They thought this is not what they thought they would get out of Bauman, and they decided to leave. Yeah. But like Morgan said, there's many narratives there that we don't know, but it's interesting to see that, um, particularly after the Shelby case, there's been a lot of people kind of leaving and moving on. And it's like interesting to see, I guess. I think one of the bigger things is someone, and Morgan probably the same, someone like Morgan and I did get fairly close to wanting to be a part of Bauman or in that process. And I think it's becoming a team that isn't, as sought after to be on yeah out that, of college that's, like mostly that's the team everyone wants to be on that's like exactly. everyone's number one pick exactly and i like, think that yeah. is no longer a thing in my well, opinion well yeah. project used to be that right project. which is interesting well, that's, that that's the thing is if you look at it like uh i mean it's if you just know list desirable about, if you know a bit about the group's history then you know that they the way they formed was kind of out of that project salazar group Jerry was like an offshoot doing his own thing. And then obviously the project are just like known to be, you want to let Gus in? Yeah. They're like known to be, they were known to be the bad guys since forever. Like they have such a bad reputation in the sport. Um, another whole big topic to talk about. And because the project was seen as the bad guys, in turn, Bauman was seen as the good guys. And they were seen that way for a long time. And now, whether like whether any of this stuff is true or not with Shelby and, and other rumors that are currently circulating, the the reputation is like tarnished. Like may I mean maybe if she if there's like some new evidence comes out, you'll be able to like there'll be changes to that, but like the there's just a big, big looming shadow right now. And it's kind of sad because it's 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 just a lose lose. Well yeah, that's the way you look at it. That's definitely the one way most people have spoken about it, is that if, if she was if she's clean and this has been a misinterpretation, then it's a bad loss for the sport. And if she is in fact uh, was cheating, then it is also bad for the sport. So it's it's it's, it's both <laughs> it's ways. Lose, it's, lose. It's, it's a lose lose. And unfortunately not, for not Gary, hashtag not good for the sport. Hashtag not, not good for not the good sport. For the sport at all. Hashtag not good for the sport. We, we only support things man. that are good for the sport. It's not good for the sport. As people that are heavily invested in the sport. It is sad to see stuff like that happen. And I think it's tough for a lot of people seeing um, you know, <coughs> someone that they, a lot of people probably looked up to that happened. And then obviously a group that a lot of people looked up to kind of happened again, I think Project. And then now this group, like Nike in particular, um, are seen as probably the most dominant brand in our sport. And they've been like that for decades. And now they yeah. have two of their best groups have deteriorated in the past few years because of yeah. cheating. So... Yeah. You know, it, it's that's probably another reason why a lot of collegiate athletes or other athletes around the world are looking at other groups that have not, you know, haven't and been a part then of on that. the flip side, you got these other great new groups starting. Yes. Like, <laughs> should we introduce our group at this point? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's other great groups. The good guys, we're the new good guys. The on yeah. the on athletic club. Well, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know the context, because it is honestly, I think like we're so we're so inside the bubble of like our world and pro running that it's like we just take all this knowledge for granted whereas like i have people that come up to me and like they're like fans of mine in some capacity but they literally like don't know who my coach is you know what i mean like they're asking questions about that so just so everyone knows we're all part of the on athletic club which is based here in boulder coached by dathan ritzenhain and the group's been around for about a year uh it's had amazing success so far with uh, people like Ollie and Joe Klecker and Alicia in particular. Jordy had a great year, ran some PBs. Uh, Leah did great as well. Like it's just had like it's it's not very old and it's had great success. 
And um, yeah, it's kind of exciting because on as a company is very young as well, about 10 years old, uh, IPO'd like last week. We talked about that on episode zero of the podcast. IPO'd last week. These boys have their stock. Wait, how much stock do you have, Jordy? Dude, that's... <laughs> I, I don't know. The some <laughs> number. Some, Jordy has some number. Yes, I also has, have, also I also have, some, have number. some number, but it's more than Jordy. It's more than Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> is this a competition? It's a competition. It, the... it always is. Yeah. So... Yeah, whatever. On exciting young company that we're all part of. And it's like really fun. And as we go on, obviously, we'll be sharing a lot of insights and stuff about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you guys have anything more to talk about the whole Bauman thing? I feel like we could talk about that for a long the time. Whole thing. But I think the one thing I want to kind of ask you two about is that what do you think is going to happen next with that group? Because it seems like right now I think they're losing fine. more people than they're no. probably going to be able to get recruited in. Well, so would it get smaller and then kind of stay like that and maybe build up again? I mean, I think they had way, they just had way too many people. Yeah. I anyway. think they did. So they're just sitting in the herd, you think? So I think the timing of a contract year combined yeah. with the Shelby thing also makes it seem like, like maybe people would be leaving anyway yeah. at the end of a contract year. But it seems like it's like almost yeah, we're, encouraged by we're the whole some, uh, we're, we're, controversy. We're creating some cause and effect that doesn't necessarily exist. It could be like yeah. it's always greener. They could think that maybe because other groups have had success. Oh, I'm, I'm, success. I mean, I don't yeah. doubt that for those people that are leaving yeah. be, for reasons of performance. That's, that's that's yeah, that's how they see it. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with that group in the next uh, few years, even a few months. Yeah. Um, if anybody else is gonna go somewhere else but uh, i mean that's I, I think they'll been, be fine but been in the news yeah i think they'll be good yeah but coming back to oac uh next week we're hosting the first annual oac autumn gala we're hosting a party at our place which we're really excited about so i think we should talk a little bit about that and then also another topic which ollie wanted to talk about which is a great thing to combine with that is kind of like the effects of drinking alcohol on performance for you you said specifically in season like yeah is season. it bad to drink in season and also looking at it as a college athlete versus a professional athlete because personally i've found it to actually be like pretty different between those two things already but first let's just talk about let's let's give an let's get some excitement for the our party that we're having next let's week. let's get the juice flowing jordy you want to mm. you want to explain a bit about our party next week <sighs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay well um i feel like we we always we wanted to have something special to to mark a, the end of um a pretty great year for our team and before we start training hard again in the fall and we all, we have an awesome house for hosting a party That's what we do. That's outside we do. and it seemed like a good opportunity to get everyone together in boulder this is basically an invite to anyone listening who lives in boulder right gus think, is going to be gus kind of, is going to be the main i think it's kind of already been said that um we're going to be uh yeah we're, 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 we're next, next friday lot. right next friday next october friday, yeah. 1st we invited a lot of people and i think this is part of a concerted effort by us to try bring the boulder running community together because this is something that not many people outside of boulder would know because boulder is just like on Instagram or whatever, just looked upon as like this macro running and all these pro runners and uh, elite runners are here. But it's actually pretty clicky, believe it or not. Like a lot of groups exist here, but there's like not a lot that happens in between the groups. Like a lot of people or groups are kind of like just like doing their own thing. And I think this should be a really cool opportunity to hopefully uh, we're going to knock down some barriers. That's what we're going to knock do. down yeah, some, knock barriers. some barriers. No, I mean, honestly, I'm pretty excited. That, the that. one thing is our sport's so individual. So yeah. even with a team, it's individual. So to have something where it's not to do with running per se, more just to have fun and enjoy each other's company, I think it'd be great for a lot of professional runners. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and groups to kind of get to know people better because obviously social media tells one tale. Yeah. And another tale can be what you know about that person firsthand. So it'd be very nice to have that in our place hosting it. Yeah. George is going to be uh, hitting the dance floor hard. Morgan's going to be hitting the dance floor be. hard. I hope we all will Carl's be. Carl's going to be hitting the dance floor very hard. And yeah. ladies, he's single. I'll so be in the bar. So is Ollie. Ollie's going to be running the bar. I'll be running the bar. Uh, gin, gin, gin fizzes. Gin fizzes all night. at 6.30 p.m. Definitely, definitely. Next yeah, Friday. So, so our, our theme for it is Met Gala. 
which Leah came up with, which I think is a great theme because it's like obviously happened like two weeks ago. So it's still kind of fresh. And And we've already already named um, Gathering the Autumn Gala. And Met Gala essentially means like wear like whatever you want, but like you're encouraged to wear something fancy and nice. Kind of out there, outrageous, like something that's going to pop the eyes of... uh, Pop the eyes. <laughs> pop the eyes. Get those eyes popping. Get those eyes popping. Of the know. ladies. So Ollie, I know Ollie was looking on the Versace and Gucci website. Yes, I, I don't was. know. I don't know if he made any purchases. But... I was looking at matching suits for everyone. It was going to cost oh. me five grand each. Um, is it worth I, it? Absolutely. Probably. Um, I do. Ollie's the, the guy, money, probably. Ollie's the type of guy who would buy that. Just so everyone knows, like. Oh yeah, I jo- love spending. Money. Jordy and I like wouldn't ever do that. Jordy, I mean Ollie, like you never know. He he would like just be i wouldn't be surprised if you were just like in bed and i just feeling a little lonely like fuck it man like I'm, i made some good money this year i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna buy myself a, a gucci suit i deserve this honestly i do fucking deserve a gucci yeah. suit to be honest to be honest i'm yeah, lonely and i want a gucci suit there's nothing wrong with that man no, nothing, no, wrong with nothing that. at all we're, I'm probably... oh, we're also looking for some live music oh so, yeah yeah Nick, Nick, anyway. shout out nick harris uh if you're listening to us into this um Fuck you. Pretty disappointed. Yeah, very disappointed. Yeah. You let us down. We're not happy. But maybe we'll take auditions next week. If anyone wants to play at the OAC Autumn Gala. Yeah. I mean, we would love you. Because if no one else comes, then we're going to be performing. And, and we're I don't not know, good. We have no talents. So <laughs> it's just going to be terrible. But, yeah, for my outfit, I'm probably going to try to go to, like, a thrift store. Honestly, I don't know if it's going to happen. But I would love to, like dress up in like a dress i would love to like do some explore my cross dress oh. side here i Wasn't think that this is the cool. first time i've heard Wasn't that Ru- did you see what russell whisper was wearing heard. the other day no so i'm pretty sure like i'm pretty sure like 75 percent of the guys at the met gala were wearing dresses they were wearing made, a version like lewis hamilton was wearing like a he was wearing a suit but he had like a dressy kind of thing yeah i just i just made that set up but like a lot of them were wearing dresses the, right it now. was very dress themed it was very yeah. flowy i'd say flowy is the right I'm looking for something flowy, so very flowy, guys. If you if you know what that, that yeah. means. Morgan wants to have let the air get into the places that he needs. That'd be nice. But yes. have you have you made any progress on your outfit, Jordy? Uh, for the gala or for the wedding? For the gala. Oh, for, for the wedding, he's oh, wearing yeah, my yeah. suit. He's yeah. wearing my suit for the wedding. Like, did you see see Morgan? You could wear this. Did you see Westbrook yeah. wearing that? Yeah. yeah. I you you would rock that. Wait, he, he wore he wore that to the gala, mm. or is that to like a basket, like something else? That I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll put a picture up. He he looks pretty Wait. fucking sick. No, he wore a suit to the mid gala. Fair, fair. Um, no, I haven't even thought about mine yet. Actually, I do. I have, I've thought about it, but I don't want to give anything away. Okay. Big, he wants big, it to be a surprise. Secret, so guys, if you want to see what Joey's wearing, yeah, I have to come to the autumn gala. Yeah, so obviously at the gala, there's going to be a lot of alcohol, uh, which is something that we like to enjoy from time to time, some people more than others. I think it's pretty interesting when you want to talk about performance and alcohol, because that is like a question that in particular a lot of college kids have asked me in the past. And I think it's another thing where like we all have different opinions on it, because uh, in college, especially say during cross country, our team had a dry season, which I think was really good because then it's just like everyone's on the same page. Um, it's really easy to like, just like stay focused and stuff. And I thought that was cool. I'm sure, did you guys have that at, fire, at uh, NAU as well, Jordy? No. Okay, well. <laughs> Short answer, we didn't. You guys, but you guys are too cool. I, we kind of, we had a more of like an unspoken just expectation that you were gonna take it seriously well that, that's like that's kind of the thing isn't it it's like but i guess is, yeah like if you can run well you can this is this is a little a dirty little secret in the running world slash literally any world whereas which is if you're performing well you can get away with a lot i will say that yes you can <laughs> yes you can so like, is it now because our team was running well well or i'm just you? saying like i'm saying so you guys for you guys it was like it was more a case of like, well, if someone was running terrible and they were going out a lot, well, yeah, they're going to get in a ton it's of true. trouble. But if someone was running really well and they were just going out, they're probably going to be fine, right? It's hard to, yeah. You, but yeah, you know what I'm saying, though. Like, Definitely. 
because that's I mean like during for us during in college during the track seasons there was no dry period and like people would go out but if you ran well like that wasn't necessarily an issue whether that's like still a good thing to do or not like whether it's sustainable long term is like another question but uh yeah you can get away with a lot but so in college i don't know like i think a lot depends on your team but as a pro you have a lot more individual freedom um and like personally i don't like drinking during the season i like to like get in a like pretty good routine which doesn't involve drinking it involves going to bed really early and reading my fantasy books and like that's just how i like to be like because i i feel like shit if i like drink and i'm trying to train hard but i can tell you from watching other people like ollie for example or like a bunch of other australians um on like the circuit competing at the highest levels like they definitely go out and drink during the season I don't know if you want to talk about You call that. me out, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, like I think I think you brought I think you wrote down so this, this topic. Is, so you this is my talk topic. This is a topic I kind of wanted to discuss because of my experiences in my first pro season compared to my experiences in my college season, uh, junior year. So like junior year, sophomore year, when I did very well, I kind of made a step forward. I was actually like not going out all the night, like he won. He won. To, he won. He uh, won. NCAA fifteen hundred. That was the step forward that he took. That's just, that's that's particularly what it was. Uh, <laughs> it was a good step. To it take. was a good step forward. Um, <laughs> it was funny because I personally, in sophomore year, I wasn't going out drinking, getting hammered, and then wake up the next morning hungover. But I was actually like drinking and going social, like you know, going to nightclubs, going to bars, and having a good time, and then just kind of being much more um, respectful about making sure I get my sleep and my recovery because obviously that's very important in the sport that we do and i was doing that my sophomore year i ran really really well and then junior year i wanted to obviously improve on that and i thought i couldn't do that kind of drinking um i stopped drinking altogether in season um and just kind of tried to be much more conservative uh get my rest and i didn't actually run very well i was actually much more stressed out so my pro year um <laughs> it was funny because i didn't know what to kind of judge moving forward and i mean i would have like a beer with geordie like a dinner or a glass of wine or like something like that like we'd usually go out to a restaurant have a have a drink and um just you know just enjoy like it wouldn't be something to to get drunk it just more just to enjoy a nice beer or a nice ipa um and that was something that i enjoyed when i was traveling in particular in europe like going to different places trying different beers um but it wasn't in the sense of getting completely hammered but then obviously you know competing after a big competition or or something like that, like a diamond league i'd go out to a bar and have a few drinks you know socialize mingle a little bit as you can with COVID. obviously it's tough with with the, that obviously going out and uh figuring out where to go without trying to get COVID. but that was kind of for me my pro year like i i did drink during the season and i still competed pretty well i i just think that the one thing is like is it situational is it depending on the person if you can kind of do that uh i think it is but I, I don't think, I think there's a stig, bad stigma around like if a guy wants to go out and have a drink or go to a bar and socialize, that he's going to freak out and then not be able to run well the next week. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, clearly, about. clearly the drinking doesn't make you run better. No. Drinking makes you worse. Yeah. Like technically well, speaking. Recovery wise, yes. Yeah. It's, that, it's not good for you, but it's more what you're getting at is more just the, the social uh, enjoyment. Yeah. You're, you're talking more about that. Like you were able to, really just enjoy what you're doing a lot more and just be in like a better headspace. And it's within that headspace where you're able to perform at your best. Just having much. a rest yeah. competition, I think, mentally. I think, I think not me. running in an elite level is never going to be a balanced lifestyle. But yeah. finding a small amount of balance and maybe having a beer every now and then is like, can definitely be, can definitely benefit your running. Oh. So, I, so I, how I think without a doubt. How would you tell uh, like a college guy asking you about that? Saying like, oh, is it okay I mean, to... College is dangerous, man. Experience? Why is it dangerous? The, the, and I know Joe was doing something similar when he was in college, but that indoor season where Ollie didn't win. <laughs> I was... Wait, I was who, won. Who, who won that race, Ollie? I think he, I think Jordy won. I'm not sure. That's the PCSD right. obviously like clouds my judgment on that race. But Dude, you, you somehow you snuck that in last week and that, you snuck it in again this week. Good job. Well, normally, Ollie <laughs> sneaks it in, but true. What I'm I going for is that 
that indoor season, I was drinking, I had this, my motto, actually, some, I don't even know. I had this thing where it was like an IPA a day. Keep, I don't know, does something. So I was drinking like one. Yeah, 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 exactly. IPA a day. I was having like one IPA almost every day that season. But I would like, probably didn't have two. Yeah, yeah. See, that's my thinking is like just being smart so, about so it. So there's just such a big difference. So I was never like, getting drunk. You guys, yeah, you guys yeah, are talking like, about drinking beer because you enjoy drinking beer. Whereas yeah. a college kid, I think, is more commonly asking about going out and getting fucked up. Yeah, it gets really <laughs> true. I think that's not, more what they're, they're, they're wanting to go and do. Yeah. Which is a very different thing. What about... Yeah. What about uh, well, the way we, we would just have an epic themed party that you would hype up like we're about to do for yeah. the whole season. And then that would get you through, yeah. Not partying either the preseason or postseason party. That's like, yeah, that's normally how you do it when you're in a on a college team. So what about the other kind of situations? Like, what about weed, for example? Or <laughs> obviously, smoking cigarettes is enough. Unfortunately, you probably smoke shouldn't cigarettes. smoke cigarettes. Or cigars. If you want to be good at this sport. I think that's a big breathing start. is you important. Can't your lungs. Basically, smoking oh. cigarettes in Boulder all summer, though. With the, but yeah, obviously, it's, it's been so nice since you've been gone. It's like so nice yeah, right now. It's just like so nice not having me in the house, is it? <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. I'm happy All to right. pick up on that. But uh, I, I think, I, I just think college is like so much fun and there's so much temptations that, and you're still such like a, you're still learning so much and you're so impressionable. Not that like we've got stuff figured out now that we're not in college at all, but it's it's risky because like, like, like I didn't like do any weed in college and I'm like really happy about that because mm. I think it would have just been like, cause I, I'm like kind of obsessive personality. I just think it would have been too dangerous to like get too into something like that in college. You're also very struck on your routine in college. And I think I love routine. That would have affected your routine. Yeah. <laughs> Big routine guy. Well, but you do a, a whole episode on Morgan's routine. Know, yeah. We probably should do that actually. We we should break we'll it. Do that that'll next. be that'll be a YouTube video that'll at one be, point, yeah. surely. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've honestly that's kind of already been in some of my videos. But yeah, so you want to talk about weed? Is that what you want to talk about? Well, I was just under like obviously weed's not going to have as massive a negative effect as getting drunk because when you get drunk, you're like hungover, you is can't this, sleep well. Is this is this science backed? I don't know the science. <laughs> is, this your, is this your opinion? No. This is just my it's opinion, I guess. I don't know. I was just curious to see what the effects would be from a from a guy that probably goes out and drinks, tries to compete at that same level, and then a person that doesn't go out and drink but does weed compete at that level. Like yeah, what? I mean, both of it is just about is about like how you're doing it, your intentions, like because so it's the same. You could say the same. Well, that weed is obviously. The thing is with weed is it's banned in competition. So you can't, you like literally can't. Otherwise, yeah. um, you You're unfortunately, just yeah. <laughs> unfortunately just you might uh, miss the Olympics and get a ban, which no one wants. So, yeah, you obviously can't do that during the season at all. And like you, yeah, it stays in your system a long time. It's like, it's just so risky. But I guess in the off season, you can do it. And I think very similar to alcohol, if you do it in the right way, it's uh, it can be healthy, but still can well, be, can, it, it can be though. it can be unhealthy because it's just a thing that like you can get it's not like addictive per se, but you can get addicted to doing it because it can be really fun and you enjoy it too much and it just makes you not want to be productive and or do anything. So it can also be dangerous, you know. And that's that's why I didn't I'm like happy I didn't do it in college. Yes, yeah. but I wonder if yeah. they'll change that after Shikara the in competition banned for marijuana particularly with our who school. knows who knows we should see how that turns out <laughs> anyway enough about drugs and alcohol in college yeah we got um, we got more topics what, to talk what, about. what what was uh what's like a, a shortened version of our advice for college i guess kids. our advice is <laughs> like, answer to that. i think the one thing is just to be smart about what you think works for you because everyone's so different right yeah if you want to have like if you want to do an ipa day like george and you feel like that would make you you know relatively more happier um then definitely you know try it out see what it feels like but obviously if you excessively drink alcohol during season you're not going to run well yeah um i think i think socializing you gotta, is important i think college. you gotta be just be aware that these things are not good for you like they're just not in themselves <laughs> but if it's like a way that you unwind and like makes you in, enjoy life more and it's it's like a socializing factor you need to socialize yeah I mean, you're like, in college you're in college for a short amount of time if it's like that and you do it in moderation 
You can have, you we sound can like have, parents. you can have the Morgan tick of approval. <laughs> we sound like parents. I'll give right you now. the Morgan tick. Right. I, honestly, I honestly, I would argue that the health benefits of a small amount of red wine or beer, good yeah. craft beer, that has like antioxidants and vitamins here and minerals and stuff. Here we go. Oh, here well, we go. Okay, so as here opposed we go. to as no, opposed no. to drinking that Dr Pepper fucking can no, sitting there on the table over right there. I that is worse than that. one beer. Health I think soft drinks are no worse doubt. Than, uh, that's, that's, that's your opinion, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to get uh, the scientists in to, uh, to back these up. But I, 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 I'm gonna be visiting. I'm gonna be visiting Ollie in hospital with like freaking colon cancer because of the if soda. Ollie doesn't have diabetes, and like it just nothing makes sense because <laughs> the amount of sugar that is in those drinks that he. It's not. Out. Yeah, it's not even the sugar. It's all the other shit that the, you don't. Those, Corn you guys try to maybe like those whatever panic and then not just have not well sorry. no because again it works well for you i mean for now i don't know maybe at some point you'll have to clean up your diet uh this is another thing that we talked about last week that we should mention again because last week during the episode all these kfc <laughs> oh come on delivery <laughs> that, that we, this out, we had all these good <laughs> yeah. topics in this other Ollie's, zero episode Ollie is single well, Ollie with help from carlos that's gonna happen and uh as Ollie we and do carlos this are keeping doordash in business yeah. As we do this podcast on the table over there, I can see Ollie's lunch, which George, you could probably guess this, it was B dubs. So <laughs> of course it was. So B dubs and it's diet. I'm on my break. I don't know what you guys <laughs> this, want from this. Me. Is no different. Okay, from, as we discussed in episode zero, it doesn't matter whether you're on break or not. I'll change. Watch you watch. I'll change. Well, I mean, you no, know, I, I know. That's not what we said. Really <laughs> yeah, I'll change and I'm running really bad. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's, All right, it's enough impressive. about my terrible diet. Let's move on to the next topic. All right, I mean, these other topics don't seem as exciting because these are your two topics, George. Oh, <laughs> roasting. Well, I mean, they are exciting, but they're just fun to talk about that stuff. And the next topic is about rehabbing injury or Carlos losing $50 to you. Which one do you want to talk about? Well, uh, well, the second one sounds like more fun. Yeah, the first one sounded practical. It so, is practical. So and, you tell, and, and yours, and I want an update on you. Carlos! Yeah, can you tell the story of why Carlos lost $50? Carlos! Is, um, bit, well, now that we're not in the NCAA, <laughs> bidding, that's legal, right? Yeah. Am I going to get in trouble? I mean, <laughs> I we're doing so. Colorado, so it's legal, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. We're all over the age of twenty-one. I mean, yeah. technically, we're foreigners anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, the law, anyway, yeah. We, the law doesn't matter to us. Well, basically, Carlos was going back home last weekend to Arizona, and somehow it happened to be going. I think he went. Did he go to the game? I'm pretty yeah, sure he went. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he went to a U of A football game, and they just happened to be playing in AU <clears throat> in football, which happens basically every year. Arizona gives NAU like a shit ton of money to go down there and play so Arizona can improve their record and have an easy game at the start of the season. I don't know how much money. Someone couple of, someone told me it was like 500 grand. Oh, I heard dude, that a couple of days ago. Man. I mean, like those, that, that program would have so much money. And on Carlos's way down there, as Carlos does, loves to talk shit on NAU. And yeah. admittedly... Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? Exactly. NAU admittedly is not very good at other, at some oh, other sports. Cross country, that's it. Cross country is anything good at. At least not known for it. And so Carlos wanted to win some money from me, and offered a bit. Well, it was actually a favorite, like a favoritized bid. So he was offering that I give him ten dollars if Arizona won, and he would give me fifty dollars. If you know you won, based on the he odds, confident. he was confident. Yeah, but insane. I mean, he should have been confident. In a, yeah, no, that's not true. In, <laughs> since like 1930 something. Oh and my! God. I didn't know is that is that crazy. It was like 89 years or something. Jesus. And long story short, you know, you ended up winning, and that was pretty tight. So and Jody got fifty dollars. Rich, what did you do with that fifty dollars? Yeah. What are you gonna spend it on? Still sitting in my Venmo, honestly. Mm. So Maybe you gotta you gotta spend something to really piss off Carlos with it. I don't know what you should, it would be. You should I put should, it just better all. Hindsight, I wanted to like I should have bet that or the loser had to wear like the other person's shirt, like an NAU shirt for a week or something. Because oh, that, oh, that would have actually killed Carlos. Yeah. 
Yeah, like Carl, we, that would have hurt his soul. We, we all <laughs> we all have pride over where we went to school, but Carlos especially is the type of guy. I mean, he's like from Arizona. He, He'll die on that hill. Like he 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 will die on that hill. He was just in Arizona like for a week. Like he loves Arizona, so he that especially would get to him pretty good. Actually, maybe I'll just like, maybe I'll buy my gala freaking outfit. You should. That'd be sick. But I didn't even really put this together that literally we all in the past week visited our college towns because Jordy is in Flagstaff right now. Um, Ollie and I spent the weekend in Madison. Wisconsin. Madtown, Madison. And yeah, Carlos was in Arizona. Uh, how's, it, how's it feel to you to be back? Honestly, it's pretty normal. I've come back a lot, though, more than you guys did. Yeah. I mean, Jordy You guys went back for the first time? I've yeah. been back probably five or six times now. Yeah. Dude, it's Jordy nice. Loves, Jordy, Jordy loves, loves flags. He loves flag stuff. He doesn't shut his, up about it. Yeah, he loves his flag stuff. <laughs> more no, than more, you, have, you also like flag stuff, though. I also love flag stuff. Flag stuff is a very nice place. Would you Would you p- potentially say flag stuff is better than Boulder? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is a whole other topic where, <laughs> <laughs> where I was going on about how overrated Boulder is. And a lot of that was to do with the air quality because I would not even change you. Uh, I would not even, like, like my – opinion on boulder due to the nice air quality is like completely different like it's like a complete 180 how much i just wake up every day and i'm like oh this is so pretty here it's so nice i can see the mountains but yeah for a bit there i was like kind of on the train of how overrated boulder is which i think is very i think it's still overrated it's very feasible to say that because it is so expensive now especially we don't even live in actually boulder we live in a town next to it so boulder itself is very expensive and it's a million dollars for a crappy house really. yeah so it is what it is but yeah Flagstaff is beautiful uh ollie and i had a great time back in madison uh as george mentioned it was our first time being back since we moved to boulder which we moved here at the beginning of july of 2020 so a bit over a year and luckily a lot of our friends and stuff are still there i mean obviously most people are gone especially from my class but we still have people that we know that we got to catch up with Mick, our coach, um, go out for dinner and all that. And it was really fun. We were there just for like three nights, I think. Three nights, yeah. Which I think was good because it felt like when we were leaving, we were like felt like we hadn't overstayed our welcome. Like I feel like you either feel like you were there for not long enough or too long. And you definitely want to feel like you weren't there for long enough, if that makes sense. Because mm. that's kind of the next like particularly for the weekend, we had obviously had a lot of fun went out and enjoyed uh madison but then the next two days we kind of got to enjoy just chilling out yeah we enjoying like we the made company a, of our um our friends from, yeah. from wisconsin did, we have some, did you have your cocktails with meg we did, we did have cocktails with we, meg. we haven't even told you this yet george but pretty much we arrived on friday morning uh and then we were gonna go out friday but we more wanted to we're excited to go out saturday initially yeah. because it was just like going to be kind of a funny day like there was the 2020 graduation was on Saturday, so like a lot of more people would have been going out and stuff. But then on Friday night, we went out for dinner, had had our cocktails with Mick, and then we went out after that, and we just got like so fucked up. Like I, I was like, drunk. I was more drunk than I've been in like three Morgan. Years. Morgan ended up a gay guy <laughs> ended up throwing glitter in Morgan's face. Yeah, I mean and it was consensual. He woke up. The, it was consensual. He woke up the next morning. And I saw Morgan just got glitter. All yeah, over his I woke face. up just so hungover with glitter all over my face uh that's the part of the youtube he doesn't let you see yeah and like we didn't even go out saturday night we were just like we were just not not about it (laughs) yeah (laughs) so that that was our trip it was pretty fun but uh yeah going back visiting was fun but i feel like you don't want to do it too much just just a little sprinkle here and there i think it was nice unless you have a girlfriend like george does yeah george has his girlfriend makes more sense to go back i mean we have mick mick's kind of our girlfriend mick is Uh, special the one the one thing that i noticed though is for us in particular we when we left it was during like a pretty heightened time with COVID. We didn't yeah. really get to enjoy Madison one last time. So I guess coming going back, we got to enjoy Madison a bit yeah, more again. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. Um, mm. I should say, I should say, this is a very abrupt and bad ending to the podcast. So my computer is literally about to die, and I need to go to an appointment right now because this took a lot longer to get going than I thought. So, and we're at forty five minutes. So that's honestly like that's actually not bad. That's pretty good for the first one. So. Um, Wait, yeah. Are you guys gonna watch Ted Lasso tonight? No. I, that was one other topic. I wanted Ollie's opinion on Ted Lasso winning four Emmys. Okay, so quickly on that, that was fantastic. Um, obviously, watch it tomorrow. Jason yeah. winning uh, lead, you know, 
lead actor in a comedy series was was great. I was excited for him. Um, but also, it was nice to see the other cast members get um, awarded. You know, like Roy Kent's actor. I don't know his name, and um, I think her name is Hannah, who plays the boss for Richmond and Ted Lasso won an award. That, but it was it won. Yeah, it did really really well, and it's cool to see that because I think it's a show that a lot of people love, and it's a good show. It's we a show that we show. are very about. If you haven't seen it, Ted Lasso's on Apple Plus. Big shout out. Um, shout out to Apple. Shout out to Apple. Definitely needed, <laughs> definitely needed our um, definitely needed our endorsement. Yeah. But yeah, it's cool to see. I mean, uh, I did see Mandalorian also won a few awards and um, another show that was quite big. Yeah, I will. We'll, we'll, anyway, talk, we'll, we'll talk definitely talk more about Ted Lasso going forward. My yeah. computer is about to die, so I would love to wrap this up. Um, Morgan's got to go to appointment. An appointment. Um, but thank you guys very much if you listen all the way through to here. Uh, we promise we'll get better at this, and George will actually turn up. Hopefully, I'll be in person. But yeah, I guess. That's it for episode one of Coffee Club. Hope you guys any, enjoyed your coffee any, and enjoyed any the conversation. Final shout outs from Flagstaff. Hey, no. Say goodbye. Say goodbye in, in New Zealand. Say goodbye, sweetie. <laughs> in New Zealand. And what do you mean? In Maori. Cheer, bro. I don't think I even know. Yeah, cheer, bro. Cheer, bro. Cheer, bro. All right. Well, that's it from us. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next week.